Are you darkness or have you been converted into light? This is what we're going to look at today in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now light in the Lord. The question we must, we must each face in ourselves, brothers and sisters, is whether or not we are still darkness. And, and to get to the answer, we have to first recognize that we were darkness. We weren't just sort of normal people who occasionally sinned. The Lord defined us as being sinners. Jesus told his audience they were evil. You can find that both in Matthew 7 and Luke 11. The foundation of our faith is that the good God came to save evil people. For you were once darkness. Not you once had some darkness. Not you once did some dark deeds. But you were once defined as being darkness. Your very nature. Who you were. Who you still would be without the light of Jesus Christ. But now you are light in the Lord. So the question is, are you in the Lord? And if you say you are in the Lord, then you must be defined as being light. And this is not just a theory. This is not like an ethereal thing. It's not like something that's sort of like out there somewhere, maybe like the cosmos or in there somewhere, maybe like, like microscopic organisms that you can't see. It needs to be concrete. It needs to be reality. First John says that the one who does what is right is righteous, even as God is righteous. And so Paul writes by the Holy Spirit here in Ephesians 5, going on, walk as children of light. So the reason we are light in the Lord is because our Heavenly Father is light. First John also says that in Him is no darkness. It also says there in First John that if we claim to know Him, and yet walk in disobedience, we are a liar, and the truth is not in us. If we are not living as Jesus Christ lived, that is, holy as he is holy, blameless, without reproach, living a righteous life by grace through faith into obedience, if we are not living in that manner, then we don't belong to him. He doesn't know us. We aren't one with him. We are not in the light as he is in the light. Now, God is in the light because God is the light. And so if we are in God and God is in us, we are defined as being light for he has permeated us. He has filled us. We are no longer filled with darkness. Yes, I would say there is still the flesh. I am not one who believes in entire sanctification as a new covenant doctrine. I don't agree with John Wesley and others who believe in that doctrine. I, I don't see it in the scriptures. I see Paul and Peter speaking about the war between the flesh and the spirit and that we must choose daily to die to the flesh and to walk in the spirit. We must feed the spirit and not the flesh. Not to go too far down that road. I don't want to distract us from the topic at hand. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, truth. Are you allowing the Spirit of God to flow through you? You can't just say that you are. You must actually bear His fruit. Goodness. Goodness is not only doing good things. It's having a new good nature out of which good things flow. It's, it's doing deeds out of a changed heart. That's the Greek for goodness. Righteousness is being rendered down. It's being like cooked in a pot, like silver heated in the furnace, and the alloys rise to the top, and you scoop them off, and you throw them away, and what is pure is left behind. Righteousness is a sense of purity. It's being refined. 
Have you allowed the silver of God to remain? And have you allowed the dross of the flesh, the world, and the devil to be burned out so that you are righteous, innocent, pure? Truth. Have you allowed God to teach you, to instruct you, to discipline you, to chastise you as necessary? So that you do not walk in delusion, deception, deceit, lying. So that you do not walk in false doctrines that tell you you can live in your sin and still go to heaven. So that you cannot walk in the false doctrine of you must keep the law of Moses to obtain eternal paradise. Are you walking in the truth that salvation is by grace through faith? into obedience and this obedience is not to the old covenant it's to the new covenant <clears throat> the writings of paul peter james john jude these new covenant writings show us a change in law a change in priesthood a change in covenant from the old to the new. And, and you may have heard this before, but really the new covenant is older than the old covenant. For the old covenant was established with Moses. The new covenant was established within God's self before the creation of the world. You can find this multiple places. But it, it says that Jesus Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And also the new covenant was announced to Abraham many hundreds of years before Moses was given the law. There was a promise made to him and it says that Jesus is the seed to whom the promise referred, the heir of all things, the son of God. <clears throat> Abraham was told of the plan of God, not in detail, but in generality. The blessing for all nations. God already had in mind and in heart what he was going to do for us. He is good and what he does is good. And so we ask him, according to Psalm 119, to teach us your decrees, O Lord. God does what is good because he is good. Likewise, here, as we saw in goodness, we do what is good because we receive his good nature. We allow him to live in us and to live through us. And so we, in cooperating with him, live righteous lives. We live in the truth. Amen. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. The will of the Lord is not always a very specific voice saying, go here, do that, don't do this, don't go there. <clears throat> Sometimes it's, it's like a husband and a wife. Later in Ephesians 5, we hear where Paul, by the Spirit of God, tells wives to submit to their husbands in everything. Now, I as a husband could want to lord over my wife and try to micromanage her every detail. I don't do that. I want my wife to have it in her heart to come to me, that I might guide her and she might submit to me, knowing that I love her and I'm trying to give her the best direction that I can as her earthly head. Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Spirit, this three-in-one God is our spiritual head, brothers and sisters. And I don't believe he is a micromanager. I believe he has things that are acceptable to him and things that are unacceptable to him. We have a lot of freedom within the will of God. There's much that he permits. He's not a harsh taskmaster. He requires obedience to the new covenant law of grace, the law of the spirit, the law of Christ, the law of mercy, that we would not live in any known sin against him. But if it's not known sin, there's a freedom that we have. All things are permissible to me, Paul writes by the Spirit in Corinthians. 
but not all things are beneficial. Here, of course, he's not saying that all sin <clears throat> is permissible, but not beneficial. For we know that sin is not permissible. Sin is rebellion. And if you choose to live in sin, you'll be cast in the lake of fire as a rebel. Paul goes on here, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. We are to be the light of Christ. It says that we are light in the Lord. And we were darkness. Now we come to be light and to expose their deeds of darkness. They do in secret, although many do them openly. But many supposed Christians do evil deeds in secret and they're headed for the lake of fire. But we, as light in the Lord, are to expose for their own good that they might repent and turn to God for the gift of righteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ before it is too late. Before they find themselves at the judgment seat and they are told away from me, I never knew you. You evildoer, you worker of iniquity, you lawless one. It is shameful what they do in secret. Brothers and sisters, may we be sincere, having no hypocrisy. May we be the same in public as we are in private. May we not be doing anything evil behind closed doors in the dark, where no one else can see, but God sees all. Just to bring it all home. The verses before this section, starting in verse 3 of Ephesians 5. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, foolish talking, coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, do you know this? For this you know, that no fornicator, that is no sexually unclean person, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God or Christ, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And that's where it then says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we used to practice wickedness, such as covetousness and fornication, sexual immorality, living in all kinds of unclean ways against our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But now, if we be in him and he be in him, we are light and no longer darkness. <clears throat> so, which is it? Are you in him or are you out of him? Are you darkness or are you light? There is no in-between. There's no shades of gray to this. And yet, I must say there are. For I believe that every person walking in the Holy Spirit still has perhaps some unknown sin. Some ways that are not totally purified, not absolutely refined. We are not totally perfect as Jesus Christ is totally perfect. God still must cover us. He must cleanse us of our guilt. For we do fall short. We do miss the mark. <clears throat> but if you are living in any known sin... If your habitual practices are known to you to be evil, you are headed for hell, not heaven. And so I call you, just like it says, awake, you sleeper, arise, come out of your deadness. Christ will give you light and you will be light in the Lord, no longer being darkness. I testify, I confess that with God's help, I am living a new life. By grace, through faith, into obedience. Amen. I love you all in the Lord. I sincerely hope these videos are a blessing to you. I hope they help you. I hope that they sincerely help you to walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and close out the video. Thank you, Father for your word. Thank you for your will. Thank you for your way. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending your son. 
the light of the world, that we might also be the light of the world. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he said, you are the light of the world, and I'm leaving the world, but you shall be here. Thank you, Father, for his prayer in John 17, that we should be light, that we should be love, that we should be the sprinkling of his blood. I pray, Father, that we would be light exposing darkness, that we would be sincere without hypocrisy, that we would walk in you and allow you to live through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, thanks again for being here. My phone number is 571-466-0085. If you want to talk and pray or fellowship, please text me, call me, 571-466-0085. Also, if you have any need in real estate, <clears throat> I'm a realtor. I can help you buy, sell, or invest. If you have any need in construction, I'm a project manager. I can help you build a house or a shopping center, so commercial and residential. Add an addition, finish your basement, whatever you need. Just let me know. All right, guys, I love you on the Lord. Thanks for being here. And if you want to give to the ministry, same name as on PayPal, sorry, same name on PayPal as here on YouTube, Joshua Gravis, J-O-S-H-U-A-G-R-A-V-I-S, -S, and same name on Facebook if you want to be friends there. May God truly bless us each according to Acts chapter 3, verse 26. It says that God sent Jesus to bless us by turning us away from our sins. So let us be blessed in him. Amen. All right, have a good day with Jesus. And Lord willing, we'll talk soon. Goodbye, everybody.